minimal access approach for tibial nailing a brief video. The minimal access approach for tibial nailing is used for the insertion of intramedullary nails used in the treatment of the following. 1. Fresh tibial shaft fractures. 2. Pathological tibial shaft fractures. 3. Delayed union and nonunion of tibial shaft fractures. Tibial nails do not have the wide variability in design seen in femoral nails. All tibial nails are angled at their upper end to allow insertion via an anterior route, and all tibial nails are straight when viewed in the anterior-posterior plane. Position of the patient. Two positions may be used for the insertion of tibial nails. Placing the patient on a traction table allows greater control of the fracture and easier distal locking. The free leg position allows greater knee flexion, which makes nail insertion easier. Free leg position. Place the patient supine on an operating table. Remove the end of the table and allow the injured knee to flex over the end of the table. Place the contralateral leg in a support with the hip flexed and abducted and the knee flexed. Do not use a tourniquet figure. Incision. Make a 5 cm incision on the anterior aspect of the tibia, beginning at the inferior border of the patella and extending the incision down to just above the tibial tubercle figure. This incision should overlie the medial border of the patella tendon. Superficial surgical dissection. Incise the subcutaneous fat and fibrous tissue arising from the medial aspect of the patella tendon in the line of the skin incision. Numerous small arterial vessels are usually encountered and will need to be coagulated. Identify the medial border of the patella tendon and incise this fascia longitudinally along the border. Figure. Deep surgical dissection. Retract and mobilize the patella tendon laterally to expose a small bursa between the tendon and the anterior aspect of the tibia, the deep infrapatella bursa, figure. The precise entry point of the nail into the medullary canal of the tibial shaft can be calculated preoperatively by overlaying a template of the nail on the anterior-posterior radiograph of the injured tibia. The entry point of the nail lies at the very proximal end of the tibia at the junction of the anterior and superior aspects of the bone. Note that this entry point, although on the superior aspect of the tibia, is extrusi novial figure. The entry point for the nail must be confirmed radiographically in the operating room in both the anterior posterior and lateral planes before entry is made figure. The entry point of the nail lies at the very proximal end of the tibia at the junction of the anterior and superior aspects of the bone. Note that this entry point, although on the superior aspect of the tibia, is extrusi novial figure. The entry point for the nail must be confirmed radiographically in the operating room in both the anterior posterior and lateral planes before entry is made figure. Dangers. Nerves and vessels. The infrapatellar branch of the saphenous nerve is frequently damaged in this approach. It is impossible to preserve all the branches of the nerve, and patients should be warned that an area of numbness is likely following this surgical approach. If a traction table is used and the thigh rest is placed within the popliteal fossa, compression of the popliteal veins can result. This can increase the risk of deep vein thrombosis. Ligaments and meniscus. If the entry point is too far posterior, damage to the tibial insertion of the anterior cruciate ligament and the anterior horn of the medial meniscus may occur. See figure. Deformity. If the entry point is too far medial, a valgus deformity will be created at the fracture site in proximal fractures. If the entry point is too far lateral, a varus deformity will be created at the fracture site in proximal fractures. Bone. If the entry point is too far inferior on the anterior surface of the tibia, then splitting of the anterior cortex of the tibia may occur on nail insertion. See figure. Nail insertion is very difficult if the knee is not flexed to beyond 90 degree due to pressure of the nail on the anterior aspect of the patella. Such pressure may be sufficient to produce a compression lesion of the patellofemoral joint or even transient subluxation of the patella producing damage to the articular cartilage of the patella. For that reason, many surgeons prefer free leg position, 
which allows greater degrees of flexion than can be easily obtained using a traction table. Thanks for watching. Subscribe Orthopedics Trauma in YouTube.